Russian pagan came up with a similar test. It's described in detail in your textbook. But the, the, the outlook or the interpretation of what's going on is essentially the same as Russian pay as, uh, I'm sorry, Glazer. The philosophical approach is the same. So Russian pagans just have another way of uh, testing for heteroscedasticity. And the Glazer was saying, was sort of suggesting flying by the seat of your pants. Russian pagan, however, suggested that instead, what you want to do is specify that model, that, that linear model that explains the least squared residual, and then the test for the presence of heteroscedasticity takes the uh, explained sum of squares from that auxiliary mm -hmm. regression, which regression of the squared error term on uh, a bunch of regressors. You take the explained sum of squares out of this regression, divide by two, and you've got a chi-square with an appropriate number of degrees free it. And you can decide on that basis whether or not there was heteroscedasticity. And you found the explanatory variable to take care of. Sometimes, <coughs> white general tests have become so ubiquitous that it's now a standard click or keystroke in the software packages. Pretty clever thing. White general tests went one step further than uh, <coughs> Russian pagan. White general test says, I don't know what the, specifically what the right-hand side variables ought to be in driving the error term. So I'm going to let all of them tell me something. And not only that, but uh, maybe I don't want to correct for heteroscedasticity. Maybe what I want to do is correct the t-statistic for the president, presence of heteroscedasticity instead. So the way the software works these days, you can, uh, if you don't click any special buttons or choose any special option, and you say, run a simple garden variety regression of y on a set of x's, you will get t-statistics computed in the regular way. The problem is that in the presence of heteroscedasticity, those t-statistics are understated. They should be, the true t's should be a little bit bigger. Because remember, if you correct for the heteroscedasticity, you get a more efficient estimate. It means that the coefficient variances are going to be smaller by virtue of having correct made the, used a more efficient estimator. That's what efficiency is all about, right? Smaller variance. So your t statistics are going to be too big in the presence, or too small rather, in the presence of heteroscedasticity. You're not going to reject enough null hypotheses. So you want to correct for the heteroscedasticity when constructing your t's. And so <coughs> White's general test, or general t statistics, is a correction on the fly for the heteroscedasticity. And because it's being done on the fly without any active participation from you, the way he does it is to say that the heteroscedasticity is caused by some or all of the x's, and I don't care which particular ones, because I'm going to use them all. And so <coughs> the way the t statistics are constructed is to use a different estimator for the variance of the beta hat. We know from before, when we were looking at the variance of the least squared estimator in the presence of a non-scalar diagonal covariance matrix, we know that the variance of beta hat <coughs> is x transpose x inverse <coughs> times x times omega times x times x transpose x inverse. So if that's the case, it's an easy job for us to construct an estimate of the middle term. That was White's genius. The paper by White is only maybe 25 or 30 years old. Nobody had recognized it before, right? It's just a simple thing that everybody had overlooked. It. It's a little simple now. And so what White says is we can use the data <coughs> to construct an estimate of x transpose omega x. So take the least squares residual from your garden variety regression model and square them. And then multiply EI squared mm -hmm. times XI, XI transpose. Okay, so we usually work in terms of 
Oh, I didn't mean to. Yeah, yeah, there we go. So Xi is a particular column out of X. And Xi transpose, you take that column and turn it into a row. So the result that you get is uh, n by n. And then you add them all up across all the different independent variables. And at the end of the day, what you come up with is an estimate of x transpose omega x. And that's just, you don't have to do anything special or difficult or programmatically in SAS or R or XPSS. You just tell it, you want the what you want white peaks. And you get a different set of peaks. And that way you can tell whether or not an independent variable coefficient was statistically different from zero without having to go to all the trouble of testing the heterogeneity. Two minutes there. And correct.